Hey guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to talk about Without a Crystal Ball lashing out at Emily D. Baker. I had a couple thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I am feeling a lot better today. Thank you for all the well wishes, but we're not here to talk about that. I wanna talk about this whole issue with, this is something that I've experienced a lot since I've known who Katie is and kind of, I have a general understanding of who she presents herself to be online. For a very long time, to me, she has always, kind of struck me as someone who is extremely jealous of anyone who is maybe more educated than her, more experienced than her, has a bigger following than her, um, has more admiration than her, more respect than her. If you fall into any of those categories, especially if you have a YouTube channel, she is going to hate you and it doesn't matter what you make videos about, who it is, you know, that you cover on a normal basis. It's a very strange sort of um, way of presenting this um, distaste that she has for other creators. Now, before I get into kind of the meat and potatoes of this, I want to make it very clear that there are some creators on this platform that I don't care about. Do I constantly bring it to my channel and lash out at people and you know, put it all out everywhere? No, because I'm not here to um, degrade someone publicly and constantly come for them when it's just as simple as two creators not liking each other. That happens all of the time. When it comes to Katie, it is so often so publicized. She will scream it from the rooftop so that everybody knows about it and she will cross promote her distaste on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just so that everybody knows how much she hates this person. And when we're talking specifically about Emily, <clears throat> Emily did have, in my opinion, from my seat, her come up did happen because of her coverage of the Tati Westbrook and Without a Crystal Ball a lawsuit last year. She gained a huge following, but in my opinion, her huge following was not because she was talking about without a crystal ball solely. I think it was her presentation, her mannerisms, her way of speaking, her way of explaining things. And that's what got my attention is that she was able to explain really complex law and legal, um, you know, uh, words and vocabulary in a really easy to digest manner because I'm not someone who's a whiz when it comes to court documents and uh, legal vocabulary, but she would describe it in a way where I could digest it. Therefore, I did, really felt like I did have a good understanding of what was happening and what all of these documents meant. And she had a really cool way of presenting it. So that's only my personal opinion. I know that some other people might have you know, a different viewpoint, but I think that she's able to take law and make it easy to comprehend for someone like me who doesn't know a whole lot about law. At the end of last year, in fact, it was almost a year ago, Katie actually made an apology to Emily because I think she realized for like a split second that she treated Emily unfairly and was very public about her opinions and her, um, in my opinion, defaming remarks towards Emily. And on December 6, 2020, she posted, one creator that I lashed out at did not deserve it. Emily Baker, and she doesn't even call her, I remember reading this last year and I was like, you can't even call her her actual name. Um, she said, Emily Baker, I apologize for my comments weeks ago. They weren't appropriate, unprofessional, and uncalled for. I wish you the best on your channel. Also, everything with the case will make sense in the future. So, fine, you're acknowledging that you were, you know, publicly humiliating someone who 
um, did nothing to you because at the end of the day, all that Emily was doing, like we've talked about, was discussing the court documents, sharing maybe some of her opinions throughout. She was not making personal attacks towards uh, Katie. She wasn't uh, defaming Katie or dragging her across her channel. When I look at an action and a reaction, it's sort of like the action of Emily giving commentary on a very public court case that was happening. Katie's reaction was totally bizarre and out of left field and completely uncalled for. Now, I could understand Katie not liking Emily. Let's just say if Emily was like, you know, without a crystal ball is a dumb idiot and she's, you know, hideous and doesn't know her ass from a hole in the ground. Like, if she was making those kinds of comments and being really petty and crude in her commentary, then Katie has a reason to not like her. You know, that's one thing. Am I saying that you should still drag someone across the internet? No, because like I said earlier, two people um, can each have channels and not like each other, but typically the reaction is due to an action of this YouTuber, and that's why the other YouTube, you know what I mean? So I hope that makes sense. But she put out this tweet, and then here we are almost a year later, and this uh, happened on Instagram. So someone said on Emily Barker's, and evidently that was a typo, but I'm going to read it verbatim. On Emily Barker's YouTube channel, she is a lawyer that goes over the cases. She showed how in Arkansas, talking about Josh Duggar, the mandated reporting is not law there. If the perpetrator confessed, totally insane. And Katie takes the opportunity to say Emily Baker is an idiot. Now, here's the thing. Is calling someone an idiot the end of the world? No, it's not. You know, we're, we're not on YouTube to necessarily kumbaya and hold hands with one another. Um, even though I don't think calling Emily an idiot is the worst thing ever, Katie doesn't really have a reason to say that. Because again, all that Emily has done is cover very public cases and give her commentary from someone who is highly educated and has the experience to provide legal commentary. Um, so this response, considering what Emily has done to me, is just really useless. I really do believe that this is Katie showing her immaturity level. That's just my personal opinion because you have no reason to call her an idiot. In my opinion, I think that Katie's very jealous. She's very jealous that Emily had her come up by, in the beginning, covering Katie's lawsuit. And she just so happened to get a following and she's doing really well. And I don't think that Katie likes anyone who gets a following by doing any video on her, whether it's neutral or in uh, a negative light, you know. Then this other person responded and said, Emily D. Baker, I meant, I find her reporting as a lawyer amazing, plus your reporting too. Great content, both of you. I understand that this individual likes both Katie and Emily, but as far as legal commentary, if we're going to look at someone who is experienced versus someone who is not experienced and known to spread lies, misinformation, and conspiracy theories on their channel and use trauma for tea, I don't really see how those two can be put into the same group, but that's just me and the way that I consume content on YouTube. So Katie goes on to say, LOL, she's an idiot. She's not a good lawyer. She's not licensed. And she literally said I was going to jail and convinced people I was. I don't even understand where or why she would say that she's not licensed. Um, that is a very heavy claim to try to come out and say that someone is saying that they're a lawyer when they're not. Like Emily definitely has a degree. She definitely has the experience. Um, and the wherewithal to provide legal commentary and provide it from a uh, seat of someone who is highly educated and highly experienced in law. This to me, it's almost like she's asking for another defamation lawsuit because you don't just go around 
and say things like that. And I watched, I would say, 85% of her commentary regarding Without a Crystal Ball. Towards the end, I did taper off and I missed a couple live streams, but I listened to a lot of it. I don't remember her convincing anyone that Katie was going to jail. I don't remember that. I don't um, recall that even being a topic. So again, we're just kind of pulling things out of the sky in order to make sure that everyone in this chain knows how much Katie hates Emily D. Baker. And then this new person chimes in and says, what? Tell me more. I listened to her on other pods about Erica Jane, but if I can't trust her, I want to know. You're asking Katie if you can trust Emily D. Baker, who she absolutely cannot stand and will lie out of her teeth about Emily. Let's continue. Katie goes on to say, I was sued months ago by a YouTuber, Tati. She didn't say Tati, but that's obviously who she's talking about. Emily was so vicious to me. Lies. She wasn't vicious. She wasn't mean. She was giving her commentary from a seat of someone who has the experience to provide such commentary on very public court documents. She goes on to say, literally, she convinced people that I was lying. Convinced people the other side had a case because they did. Said I was destroying evidence and perjuring myself. Remember the whole motion to not delete your shit? That's exactly what she's talking about. Motion to not delete your shit means don't delete your shit. And that's exactly what Katie did. She floated me going to jail, which I don't remember that. If y'all remember that, please correct me. But like I said, I don't remember anything about Katie's going to jail. She sucked the ass of the opposing counsel, counsel who fed her info. Based on my seat, she was always giving commentary on public documents that were filed in the case. She destroyed my reputation, blocked me, and wouldn't speak to my attorney, and I won the lawsuit. She's foul-mouthed, mean, racist. Watch her Instagram about Breonna Taylor, a Republican, and is all about Blue Lives Matter, not licensed where she lives, shouldn't give legal advice, but does, and she's a clout chaser. So that's a lot to unpack. The only person that can really ruin your reputation is you. So if the thing's coming out of your mouth on a public platform and being published in videos and comments like these, Katie is absolutely reckless when it comes to putting comments and tweets out and then deleting them and lying and just, we know how she operates. That is what's ruining your reputation. The way that you acted during your defamation lawsuit is what ruined your reputation. The way that you have lied and slandered and sent out misinformation about tons of different public figures is what ruined your reputation. Being caught in such lies, being given the opportunity to fess up and say, I got this wrong, here's the correct info, not doing it. That's what ruins your reputation. You want to be called a journalist. You're definitely not one. We've had that conversation before. And as far as her just throwing out these, she's foul mouthed. I cuss too. I mean, cussing to me is the absolute least of what anyone should be concerned about. If you don't like someone that cusses, then move on to the other channels. Um, but to blatantly say that she is um, mean, racist, and a Republican, to me, I don't see why that would matter. I've never heard her get extremely political on her channel. And to paint someone as mean and racist with no um, physical evidence to back up those claims is asking for a defamation lawsuit. I cannot believe that... Here's the thing. I've heard... Um, I've heard a lot of crazy claims be put out there before, but if you're going to say that someone is, um, you know, racist or something like that that carries a really significant, um, it, it needs to have, it needs to have some kind of evidence behind it. It's just absolutely terrible. You don't just say that about someone because you don't like them. 
or they don't like you, y'all don't get along. Now, if there's actual video evidence or stuff on Twitter where you can compile this information and say, this person might be this way based on all of this information that I have, that's one thing, but because of her video on Instagram about Breonna Taylor, you're gonna literally call her racist. That to me is disgusting. As far as her saying that Emily is sitting on her channel giving legal advice, based on what I have seen and kind of how I've consumed her content, I look at her as a legal commentary channel and she constantly says, if you have a situation, you should seek legal counsel in your state where you live. Um, she's not sitting on her channel just giving out advice unlike Katie. So that same person responded again and said, OMG, just someone acting that way, you can tell isn't legal savvy. I'm sorry. I'll definitely be cautious if podcasts have her on. But by the way, I'm Republican too, but I still want to follow because I 100% agree on everything you've reported about the Duggars. How can you agree with 100% of what she puts out about the Duggars? Half of it is slander, lies, and nonsense. And speculation when she has no right to speculate on some of the things that she talks about. I guess one of the things that I'll never understand about Katie is just the fact that it seems like the amount of people that she just spews hatred at, um, and I'm not talking about just simply not liking someone, I'm talking about actually coming out with these kinds of claims and putting them all over social media it's, it's almost like her, her goal is to humiliate someone as much as they can be humiliated if people will actually listen to her. Now, at this point, most people won't listen to her. They realize what her gig is, but there are still some. You literally saw that girl say, oh, okay, I'll be careful. Like, I don't know. She just seems like someone who, it seems like once she has it out for you, any opportunity she has to completely annihilate you, she'll take it and run. Um, and again, this is not me saying that all YouTubers need to get along because that's just completely unreasonable, but it's the manner in which she does it and it's these egregious claims that she puts out onto public sites like Instagram and doesn't even think about what she's typing and the fact that people will take screenshots and will see this and it makes her look like an idiot. And I know that's name calling, but the proof is out there. And in my personal opinion, I think that Katie is one of the idiots of YouTube. I do my best to not, you know, call people names on my channel, but I think that I've seen quite enough of Katie Joy doing idiotic things where I feel comfortable calling her an idiot and that's just my personal opinion. So what do you guys think about her, um, you know, saying this stuff about Emily a year later when it sort of felt like the dust had settled, everyone's moving on with their channels and here she comes out of the woodwork just ready to humiliate someone publicly. So either way, I wanted to share this with you. It did happen a few days ago, but as some of you know, I was feeling down for a couple of days. Um, if you saw my last video, if not, you can go check that out. But thank you for all the well wishes again. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.